I woke covered in earth, clawing my way to freedom. It's crazy, even underground, you can still tell which way is up. When my fingers reached freedom, I grabbed at the air. But it was hot. Hot as hell. The heat was already unbearable, and I wasn't even all the way free yet. But the weight of the dirt was starting to cave my chest in, and I could feel my body running low on strength. When I got free, I, I couldn't see anything around me. The air vibrated and smoke flowed like clouds in a hurricane. Dark figures lurked in the haze. I could smell them. They smelled like sulfur and rotten meat. If this was hell, those were demons. I found out very quickly that they'd rather do more beating than talking. The demons beat me with their pitchforks, the tips burning like fire. But through my bloody and blurred vision, I watched every blow in agony. I wanted to die. But I think I'm already dead. The relief I felt after the beating stopped was heavenly. The demons drug me through the mud. Their hooves kicking the sludge in my face. They were dragging me to a door. Inside, I could hear moans and groans, just like mine. I wasn't the only one suffering here. The demons threw me through the door and shut it. And a voice cut the air with a screech. You were here. Only to be broken again. Don't become strong. Strength is a trait of fools. The stronger you get, the worse the breaking of your strength. Stay weak and you will flourish. The demons entered the room and sprayed me down with filth that even a garbage man couldn't stand, washing away any last hope I had. My injuries shined like rubies, and I did my best to protect them. A true brutal treasure. A hole opened up, and food dropped through. The bread is harder than the pan it was baked in, and the meat was seasoned leather. But the taste is amazing. You'd be surprised what you would eat when you feel like you ain't ate in weeks. Now while I was eating, one of the demons knocked on my door. When you go to sleep, I will enter your room. As soon as your eyes close, I'm coming in. Coming in. Well, I guess I ain't getting no sleep tonight. <laughs> I could hear his footsteps as he walked away. Yeah, I'm gonna be staying up real late tonight. But as time went by, I started to nod off. And just when I did, I heard a laugh. <laughs> Don't forget my promise. So I stood up and I, I moved around, trying to shake off the sleep. I massaged my wounds as I tried to remember what got me here. Suddenly my door opened but no one entered the room. I walked to the door cautiously and peered into the dimly lit hall. I moved slowly down the hall, trying to stick to the shadows. I heard someone and I froze. A man screamed in agony as a group of demons carried and beat him. I want to help. You know, it seems right. 
but I would give myself away. And as they beat the man, he kicked and knocked something off one of them. Whatever it was fell to the floor and the demon didn't seem to notice. It was a gun. What if he was the one who freed me? I have to help, right? I dove for the gun and shot two of the three demons and held the last one hostage. How do I get out of here, I asked him. There's no way out. Not for any of us. This is your life. Until you die. Repeatedly. The man I saved said, you know, they probably heard the shots. Kill him and let's go. I hesitated, but the prisoner picked up another gun and shot the demon before I could even realize what was going on. He grabbed me and pulled me along with him. We ran down this dark corridor until we reached the door with smoke coming from under it. The prisoner looked desperately for another way, but the alarm started to ring and we made our way through the door. The room was hotter than anything I've ever experienced. I could hear screams around us and what I could only assume was the smell of burning flesh. I can't see anything, I said. The prisoner said, just look for the light. We opened the heavy door and ran inside. I leaned against the cell to catch my breath, not realizing that there was a prisoner inside. He reached through and grabbed me. The prisoner that helped me attacked the hands of the man so I could finally get loose. But while I got loose, he teared a piece of my shirt and took it with him. The man inside the cell hid in the shadows, but he spoke to me. Come here. Come here. Just let me hug you. I haven't touched a human in so long. Please. 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 The prisoner that was helping me said, Come on, let's keep moving. We gotta go. Rows of rows of cells on each side of the wall with shadowy figures inside. Some talking crazier. Some screaming in pain. Some just stood there, staring at nothing. Some laid on the floor like they were dead. Their bodies rotting right there in the cell. Do you know where we going? The prisoner asked me, do you remember anything? Like, how did you get here? What happened? And I said, I just remember glimpses of things. I remember a woman, like a, a beautiful woman. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm in the dirt, you know, getting my head beat in. The prisoner said, I remember the outside world. I remember it. I know it exists. I know this isn't life. But I, I remember making some bad choices. I remember not listening. We continued down a tunnel until we reached a big glass window. Inside we saw freedom. We saw hope. We saw the light. We saw the sunshine. The sun shined brighter than it ever shined before. I woke up screaming and clawing for my bed sheets. Every time I had this dream, I always woke up the same way. 
There's a thin line between reality and fantasy. A thin line that I've been balancing on, struggling not to fall too far to either side. Fantasy used to be a big house in the suburbs, a family, kids, pets, and a beautiful wife in the kitchen preparing a meal for her husband as he came home from an easy day at work. Now fantasy is nothing but a dream deferred. Reality set in a long time ago, slapping me in my frowning face every chance it got. I often think that maybe I would fantasize more often, but it's hard when you're dodging the bullets of the people that destroyed your fantasy in the first place. I wanted to give in, just accept defeat and take the punishment that was headed my way. I couldn't stand waiting any longer. The clock ticking in my head became a bomb, and I knew it was about to explode at any second. Working on the cover is brutal. Imagine every word you say and deed you do is a lie. I took an assignment that nobody else wanted, or to be completely honest, nobody else was dumb enough to take. I was so deep on the cover that I couldn't even contact my family. I moved to a new city and started working for the most brutal up and coming street gang in the country. Murder Mob, Double M for short. Now I had one person who I could contact in case of an emergency, but that didn't make much sense because every second of my life was a freaking emergency. But even then, I had to be careful because there were moles in the police department. So no one knew I was undercover but him. I was recommended to one of the smaller but trusted sets of Double M as a gun runner. Now, I was given a few cases of AKs and bullets to use to set up the game. Now, as brutal as they was... They were very precise in the way they committed their crimes. Always making sure there wasn't any evidence left behind to tie them to the crimes they committed. Now those crimes were so brutal that anyone that was left alive was too scared to come forward and talk. So police had to come up with a plan as slick as the criminals they wanted to catch. The AKs would leave a distinctive marking on the bullets. And the bullets themselves were already marked. This way all the murders done by them could be tied back to them easily. Once enough murders were committed, it should draw the attention of FBI or preferably the Marines. And we could get rid of Double M before they got any bigger. I didn't like the plan. That meant more people were going to have to die in order for us to bring them in. Why couldn't I just sell them the guns and bust them on the gun charges? <laughs> One thing I found out about my time here doing police work is it's not always clear who the good and bad guys are. The meet was scheduled for a Sunday night. So the streets had a no dealing on the Lord's Day policy. So it was perfect cover. Even the worst gangster respected the policy. The only thing worse than criminals is criminals that think they got the Lord on their side. They had me meet with them on the industrial side of town. So a truck full of guns would blend in with all the other trucks moving around. I really didn't agree with the strategy here. You know, I, I, like I said, giving guns to gangsters seemed like it was... Everything but police work. The very opposite, in fact. But I had my superiors I had to answer to. And I did all I could to look the part. Which included dressing like a rapper and staring in the mirror for an hour. Practicing my fake smile and emotionless eyes look. I usually kept a few guns hidden on me just in case. 
Because I always felt like at any moment I'd be recognized by somebody I busted back in the day. Whose path of evil led them right here with me on my path of justice. <laughs> Speaking of paths, lately mine hasn't felt so just. I've realized the root word for justice isn't just, it's justified. I commit the same acts as the criminals that I pursue. The only difference is my actions are justified by the people in power. My gun has fired more shots than many of the criminals that I've arrested or put down. I pretended we were different just to stop my memories from driving me crazy. I made my way to the meat spot and I was the last one to get there. Double M head guys everywhere. They circled me like sharks that smelled blood. And some stood on rooftops like vultures, waiting for the sharks to get done feeding. I opened up the truck, showed them the guns. They seemed to be happy. It's amazing though, how a left turn versus a right turn can turn somebody's world upside down. As they unloaded the guns and inspected them and checked them out and checked the ammo and went to go get the money, some woman walked up. Some woman walked up with her child. I don't know what she was doing over here in this part of town. Maybe her car broke down. Maybe she was looking for her husband who worked over here somewhere. But for whatever reason, she was here. And for a quick second, she looked up and she saw a case full of AK-47s. In a split second, I had to make a decision. Do I watch why they killed this lady, or do I blow my cover? Trying to talk murder mob out of murdering <laughs> it was like trying to talk water out of being wet. I said, hold on a second, wait a minute, y'all, wait a minute. We ain't got, you know, it's okay, it's cool, it's cool, you know. It's, it's just, uh, it's just some props we got here for a movie we gonna shoot. That's all. It's okay, lady. It's just props. We shoot the movie, all right? <laughs> you and your son get on out of here, okay? The lady seemed pretty street smart. So she quickly grabbed her son and put on a fake little smile and turned to leave. The only problem was I saw one of the gangsters going for their gun. I saw him draw it from his pocket. I saw him click the safety off. And I saw him reach up to point it towards her. Now my arm became its own entity and reached into my waistband and pulled my pistol out and fired a shot before my brain even realized what was going on. It's hard to fight your instincts.